Welcome to Maryfield's Gardening Advisor, brought to you by the experts at Maryfield Garden Center. Join us as we discover beautiful plants, new trends, and exciting ideas for your landscape. So let's get growing together. Maryfield's Gardening Advisor, bringing out the best in your garden. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Maryfield's Gardening Advisor. Welcome to a perfect Memorial Day weekend. We were just talking with Dave, the weather <laughs> forecaster, and it is just perfect. Absolutely. Oh. I think could it just stay this way? Not go over eighty two. Uh, Woo. Oh, oh, oh. So it's a perfect, perfect weekend. weekend to garden. I was just about to say perfect weekend to garden. Perfect weekend and especially a perfect weekend to garden. So yes. come on in to Maryfield Garden Center because if you are having a Memorial Day party of any kind, we've got gorgeous plants, you know, color everywhere. I mean you all have the annual section just chocked full. It's beautiful. It is so beautiful. <laughs> so beautiful. Which is what the program is all about today. That's right. It's all about some beautiful plants, some very dependable beautiful plants, and, and how you combine them. And, and right now, we've got a broad spectrum, mm -hmm. you know. Right. I love bouncing between the annual section and the perennial section because they complement each other, whether you're working in the soil or in containers. So basically, that's what we're going to be talking mm -hmm. about. And and we'll have a little guide today. If we if we bring up the the first pick. Oh yes. Well, we have a little friend with us yeah. on set today. We have Tommy. Tommy the Tommy's turtle. back. <laughs> yes. I need to protect these little guys, you know. I know when my kids were little and then the grandkids, they like to put it in a little cardboard box and talk to it for a little <laughs> bit, you know, but I always had them release it right away. Right. Because um, they're almost endangered. We have so many roads and so forth oh, now. Yes. I worry about them. And, and yeah, they get a tomato or two every now and then, but they're so worth it. Love the little box turtles. So Tommy's going to help explore the garden this morning. And um, I do have a tip before okay. we yeah. totally get into the beauty of the different plants. Okay. I have a picture to go along yeah, with Yeah, I went out it? into the garden last week and snapped this picture. Mm -hmm. There is an area where I have a lot of different varieties of tulips that bloom at different times and uh, some narcissus daffodils and they've pretty much finished. Now comes the allium, the late things and the Dutch iris which are delightful by the way. Kind of make a mental picture about this because next fall you may very well want to put in some of those bulbs. They're absolutely beautiful and they bloom later along with the perennials that are coming up. What I would like to encourage you to do is to go out and take the stalk of that bloom away mm -hmm. because that way all the energy goes back into replacing that bulb and not into the formation of seed. So take away that seed bud and then let that foliage yellow off. Let it go yellow. If you don't, it can't give the nourishment that the bulb needs for next year's bloom, okay? One good way to live with that a little bit better is to plant your bulbs among your perennials because as those perennials grow, they'll cover that foliage. Plus, you can add some nice annuals now mm -hmm. and, and you've got wonderful color coming on along with it. So that's my tip for the morning. Great, great. <laughs> okay, well before we get started, lot, uh, just a few, a couple quick announcements. Uh, it is Memorial Day weekend and on Monday at Maryfield Garden Center we will be closing a little bit early. So we will be open from 8 until 6 on, on Memorial Day. Um, and, we, and actually, we forgot to mention we are not doing any phone calls today because we've, as you, if, once you see a big shot of the <laughs> of the set, you will see we are just covered with, with floral flowers, flowers today, yeah. so lots to talk about. Um, tomorrow at our Fair Oaks location, our friends at the Arlington Rose Foundation are going to be having a seminar. And it is called Practice Perfecting Roses for Bouquets and Shows. Uh, that's going to be tomorrow at our Fair Oaks location from 2 to 4 p.m. And the, the reason there, or one of the reasons they're having that, or a good reason for you to attend, 
is that in two weeks, June 7th and 8th, they will be having their annual Rose Show again at our Fair Oaks location. So that will help you get prepared for that. So just right. give you a heads up on that. So yeah, it's always beautiful. Right. Wow. Absolutely. It's so. amazing what they can do with yep. <laughs> their roses. Yes. So that's our quick announcements for the day. Okay. <laughs> well, before this segment is finished, let's, let's touch on color. Whether it's annual or perennial, uh, whether it's in containers or it's in the ground, there are some things that you can do that are a lot of fun. I just last week, because I'm sort of late getting my containers done also, um, which I always like to have and change up every year mm -hmm. so that we have these pictures. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I used a lot of burgundy. The broader leaf that you see there is Strobilanthus. It's wonderful. It's a nice tall plant for in the garden or in a container. I repeated that color with other burgundy purplish plants as you wish. Um, a wonderful new plant, an Altananthera, which has different colors in it. This one is a draping one. Some of them are the tall plant too. And the Burgundy Secretia, or Wandering Jew, okay. I'd, I'd like, there are, I've tried to have some close-ups of some of these, so let's continue with that so that you can get a better idea. I wanted you to see the overview of what was there, but coming back closer to this with just one of those containers, I've got enough in each of this grouping of containers to pull all that color together. And and I think this is my peach year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'm trialing has a theme this year. <laughs> yeah. I'm trialing a lot of those incredible begonias. <clears throat> I just can't believe how many beautiful begonias there are. And so I'm trialing a lot of those and and this peach looks so good with um the, the purple, the purple, shall mm -hmm. we say. And yeah. as I said, that particular one is Strobilanthus. Okay. And it's such an easy one. That's the tall accent, okay? Mm -hmm. The fillers are the begonias, and then the spillers are the wandering Jew, which picks up, again, that same color. Right. And um, then in the final picture mm -hmm. for this particular segment, I want to also explain the importance of putting plants together that have similar needs, whether it's in the ground or in a container. The colocasia or elephant ears have, like the begonias, come such a long way. There's so many colors. You're seeing a lime green in this, you're seeing a burgundy in this, some have incredible stems. They're magnificent plants, and they can be overwintered also. I know that they require a moist soil, mm -hmm. and so you would not put the Riger begonias in with them right. because the begonias would rot. Mm -hmm. And so I used the Wandering Jew to pick up that uh, color Beautiful in it color. Because mm -hmm. it likes the same conditions that the um, colocasia mm -hmm. or elephant ears do. So think in terms of all of that. How much sun do you have in your garden? How much shade do you have? Um, moisture, mm -hmm. you know, and keeping it moist. <coughs> so those are some of the points that we're beginning with today. Great, and Peg, may I say I love the hat? Thank beautiful, you. beautiful. It's gardening <laughs> yes. time. Well, it, it's time for the hat. Too. Yes, yes, yeah. it is. Protection you is very important. You learn sometimes too late <laughs> how important right. it is to protect Absolutely. one's skin. Okay, we're going to take a quick break, and we will be right back. Beautiful color. Oh, oh. You know, this weekend, especially Memorial Day weekend, it kind of kicks off the summer. So, you know, you've got your back, a, a summer full of backyard parties and that type of thing. And color is just so important in that. It's just beautiful. So love we've it. got, love we've it, got it. a garden we're going to go. It's Instead of sending me always to the virtual garden, we have Which a garden right here. Yeah. But we're not ready for that yet. <laughs> 
Not ready for that yet. <laughs> okay, but, what do we have here? Well, I do have a number of pictures because I totally believe <laughs> pictures are a thousand words. This is an invaluable plant. There was a time when I didn't care for Gallardia, but I do now because there are so many different varieties. I particularly like Arizona Sun and it makes a great cut flower. It blooms all summer long. The bees love it and we have to protect the bees also. There are certain parts of this wildlife that I could do without a little bit. <laughs> But there are certainly those that we can't do without, and our pollinators are very, very important. So a lot of the flowers that we'll talk about today are also attractants for the good guys in our garden and in our lives that we do need to take care of. But consider Gallardia. Most of them are two, two and a half feet, front of the border, middle of the border, even in containers these are valuable because if you did head periodically they will just continue to bloom. And the following picture is another uh, plant that we need to consider and that's the echinacea. There are a lot of echinacea on the market and some of the newer varieties are just beginning to filter into to the garden center. Perennial. We talk about what is perennial, what is not perennial. Every now and then we run into a group of flowers that isn't as perennial as we would like, but my frequent answer is just try it. Just take the chance, you know. All the, the native echinaceas are incredibly hard. They seed in my garden and I love them. And again, an, another way to bring those butterflies and birds. And it's a magnificent yep. attractant mm -hmm. and the seed heads, although I like the dead head to keep them going, um, the seed heads are a magnet for the goldfinches. Mm -hmm. Great. So that's a, a one, and again, a good cut flower mm -hmm. too. And that's another way to deadhead because a lot of the flowers that we're talking about today are valuable as cut flowers. Yes. Absolutely. Nice to, to bring them into the house and to, to enjoy them. I enjoyed last night, my, speaking yeah. of bringing in the house, my, we have a rose garden that Rob mm -hmm. does on the side of the house, and my, it was my, we were celebrating my niece's birthday, and I went out and was able to make a nice bouquet of roses to oh, take to her. Isn't that great fun? I love doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do too. In the following uh, picture is a plant that I just cannot be without, and that is Asclepius. I love it that name. It comes by, I do too, mm -hmm. butterfly weed. I don't like that name, but weed, <laughs> but <laughs> I like a sleepy. Well, it <laughs> seeds itself about, and this is in my own garden uh, in the last year, maybe two, mm -hmm. and it's planted with um, lavender, mm -hmm. both of which like similar conditions. They like good drainage. Now. There are Asclepias, or milkweed as we call them, that like wet conditions, but this is not one of them. And, and there's another picture. I think I was so taken with this, I had to have two pictures. <laughs> <laughs> you never have enough pictures of them. <laughs> but that's the lavender and, and the Asclepias. And if you do plant the lavender, be really certain that you give it excellent drainage, okay? And, um, in the following picture, I really have an overview of where I've trialed so many plants in the past and where I have sunshine, six to seven hours of sunshine because when a plant says full sun, it doesn't mean it has to have sun all day long, okay? Mm -hmm. But it does certainly need uh, some. So this is where I've trialed them and there's Dianthus. Dianthus is a wonderful plant for front of the border or even going into the center. And the following picture shows a plant that's in bloom now at the garden center, and that's iris. There are many different kinds of iris. And there's peonies there, lots of peonies in bloom at the moment, just totally, totally beautiful in that area. So by all means, come in and have a look at some of those. In the following picture, there's, there's grasses. Uh, this one happens to be Stipa tenuissima, 
and it it really is wonderful at the front of the border or in a container or in the center and here you see the echinacea pe mm -hmm. peeking out from that and in in the uh, the last picture for this segment is a plant that's fantastic it gets actually about three feet tall Baptisia and when we come back um, in the in the next segment I will well actually I'll probably wait till we go yeah, into the garden mm -hmm. yeah okay. because I have a Baptisia here with me today that you're going to say oh my goodness that Got is to have just that. beautiful Got to have that. it is a good like lupin mm -hmm. a lot of people love the blue lupin right. and that's not terribly perennial because it doesn't like our heat mm -hmm. you almost have to treat it like an annual but this one just blooms for a nice long period has its beautiful green foliage and then in the fall takes on another character Absolutely. it becomes golden mm -hmm. so these are some rather special plants these are great these are plants yeah. that you may or may not know kind of our theme today so we've got more of those when we return stay tuned shot of what Memorial Day is all about. You know, yes. Time to honor our fallen, fallen heroes and I yes. think to be thankful for our, all the men and women who every day serve and protect us. You know, it's, Absolutely. It's just, we, we do need to think about that and it it's very easy to think about that when you hear the rolling thunder. I know. I, I've made the comment I personally am not fond of motorcycles <laughs> on the road, okay? But there, I'm fascinated with the rolling thunder. Mm -hmm. It has such meaning and it's a constant reminder that these people have come into town to remind to us. To remind us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's wonderful. And there's That's so right. many so many things going on, you know, in town and in your in your own hometowns today to honor mm -hmm. You know, throughout the weekend, but to, to honor. And that's what, what it's all about. I, I think so. so. I think it would be fantastic to just go down there and get right in the middle of I it. I know. But I know that's not going to happen. <laughs> okay. I like when we, when we leave the show on Saturday, it, oh, a lot of them are coming right in. And it's, it's so neat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. Okay. Let's we can, get back to plants. Well, yeah, back to the garden. Mm -hmm. Back in the garden. We, this is a wonderful plant, Pyracantha. I'm trying to to share some of the things that are growing and have been growing for a long time in my garden and how I use some of these things. We showed you in the previous segment peonies, iris, and here we are beginning a little bit about clematis, clematis as you wish. They are the queens of the garden. They all bloom approximately the same time in the spring. And, and I would love to just pull up a chair and sit down beside them oh, because yes. their beauty is sometimes so fleeting. I let a lot of my clematis weave through small trees, mm -hmm. for instance, that pyracantha. It's weaving its way through. It's in part shade. You will never get as heavy a bloom in part shade as you do in full sun but it's so rewarding and the balloons last longer so it is a great way to do that I don't recommend that you use the paniculata which is so strong in the fall and and the Montana which is also a strong one might overwhelm they're too big might overwhelm but most of the others are just perfect to plant at the base and weave through. We've got one on, I feel like it's a very tough plant because, I mean, it's on our mailbox, has been yeah. for years, and yeah. gets some abuse, I might, I must say, and yeah. just comes back strong. Um, clematis are tough until they're not tough. True. <laughs> true, true, true. They can also get clematis wilt, and we'll talk mm -hmm. about how you can help with that. Doesn't happen often, but it does happen. Here, this one is up by my mailbox, but it isn't growing on the mailbox. Mm -hmm. It's actually growing on a fun little frame behind it. And here again, it is in part shade. And they last for such a long time. Mm -hmm. Love that one. And, and the following shot is actually, uh, again, beside the road and, and grows on a little fence. And it is very attractive. Now let's talk just a little bit about that 
clematis wilt, okay. which can happen right. every now and then. If you have a portion of the plant that just suddenly, for no good reason, dies back, um, trim it away, put it in the trash, not the compost pile. And if the entire plant goes back, cut it back and don't don't worry about it. Don't dig it up. Don't throw it away because sometimes too much later that plant will come mm -hmm. back. You know, I've had that. That's happen. what I mean when I say tough. It just it really <laughs> is tough. But one thing you can do, I, we talked about tomatoes, I think, last week, that that is one plant that you need to plant deeply because the roots will come out all along the stem. Clematis is another one that you need to plant deeply. If the soil is here, plant that plant two inches deeper. Okay, this, can you this way so you can see okay, what she's talking she's about? So much yeah. better about holding <laughs> these plants. Two inches deeper, because it will send up new shoots mm -hmm. more readily. And um, I love my clematis. Okay, fantastic. All right, let's go through just a few of these other things. I put in a picture taken several years ago because, as I said, I try all different things each year and try to make it look a little different each year. And this is the area with my red chairs. Right, your red chairs. I <laughs> love those red <laughs> chairs, okay? Everybody loves those red chairs. There's quite a grouping here in the background. You can, again, see some of those elephant ears, colocasia. They are gorgeous in pots. They are gorgeous in the ground. They will take full sun, which is unusual for a big leaf plant if they're kept moist. And they will also take part shade. And in that area also, there are spikes um, that's growing in other containers. But this same kind of thing can be accomplished in the ground also. And let's continue with some of this because I, more pictures, I do I want to mm -hmm. um, show you hummingbirds. I, I've tried to weave the, the wildlife thing, the desirable ones. Right. <laughs> <laughs> there through, are some we, don't, we won't discuss. This, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> through this um, program, because all of these things are very important to the survival and to the pleasure of enjoying them. Hummingbirds. Caught this picture last summer in the annual section at the Fair Oaks location. There were several little groups that came in. It's a big area, so they weren't too territorial. They can be mm -hmm. and put up quite a fuss. But all of these things are so good for drawing the hummingbirds. I think we have another picture mm -hmm. here to share with you. Yes, zinnias want to mention it's time for zinnias now. There are some things that don't like cold ground, but our ground has warmed up enough now that it's fine. So the zinnias are another one that I would like to include in the garden. And it's also a very, very good one to um, cut mm -hmm. and come in. Keeping these things deadheaded is important to keep them going all summer. So. It's, it's good. Did okay. you have a couple plants you wanted to show Well, quickly? we've got some, yeah, I've got this Drobilanthus that I actually okay. brought along. This, this is that beautiful plant that's in the center. It's tall. You can actually pinch it out to get it to bush out more. So it's your tall one. Mm -hmm. You can have a filler. You can have a spiller. But this is also good in the garden, too. And I want to introduce one plant here that most people don't use enough. That's called Angelonia. This one's angel face. And it blooms all summer also. And it is magnificent. And no, it doesn't have to be red for the hummingbirds mm -hmm. to like it. I love know? this purple color. It's great. Mm -hmm. But that purple repeats the color in the strobilanthus. Mm -hmm. So think about that when you're making your selection. Combinations are all so All right, important. one more. If we're okay. going to hold oh, that. Okay. Here's another good one that you may or may not know. It's called scavola. And look how pretty that is together. That's how you wow. form your containers mm -hmm. or form your plot in the garden. Now, wouldn't those three look great in the garden as well as in a container? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So there you've got it. Okay. Okay. 
Well, why don't we take a quick break and we will come back. Actually, I think we're going to send you to the virtual garden. When we come oh, back. excellent. Okay. I love being in the we'll garden. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to Mary Fields Gardening Center Advisor. This is a wonderful opportunity to come out into the virtual garden and to show you, to be able to point to things. Did this particular one several years ago, and I have to use it. And I've done some variations on it ever since because my home is has a large retaining wall with a change of grade. And as you come down the steps, I've used this dichondra. This is the broader leaf that comes down here, dichondra. Then there's a very fine gray leaf, lotus vine, okay? Dichondra, lotus vine. And then there's a variegated leaf. It's often called sweet potato vine, but it isn't a true sweet potato vine. It's selenum. And then there's a gray curry along with the red begonia all summer long it was beautiful and most people don't know that some of these vines can actually do this i think there's a couple more pictures here maybe a close-up with how i brought color into it here is a plant that is underused and now industry it used to be the little tiny short one that um you can actually pick because they're they're dry and they dry don't have to dry, they're already dry feeling. But they're wonderful for dried flower arrangements too. And I like to put them in the vegetable and herb garden as well as containers. Gumfrina. And that's planted in the top of those containers along with something bright and red, which is the big begonia or the whopper. Those are some newer varieties now. And coleus, oh my goodness. There are so many coleus out there now. And this is a cascading one in the background here. Coleus are so valuable for the center of that tall plant, either in the garden or in containers too. You can have coleus as the tall plant and coleus that spill out. So many. And there's another picture here. Here again is a close up. Let me, let me step back because look at the textural changes. This is the lotus vine, which comes up and over. The gumfrina is the purple, the begonia is the red, and the curry is the gray. Curry is not the curry that you eat, although you find it in the um, herb section. Also, another good plant to take the place of that one would be Dusty Miller, and, and that's a fantastic plant, too. Let's go forward and see what the overview is and here again I'm going to step aside because this was a year that I did a similar kind of thing here but I planted different varieties of coleus in separate containers they were magnificent you get not bloom that you're after in this, but color in the leaves. And you can use them in the shade, or you, there are those that can take full sun. Absolutely beautiful. Now, you couldn't walk down the steps, for goodness sakes. No, you really could. But they were all down the steps, and I totally enjoyed that. We'll continue with plant combinations. Went out into the garden center and snapped these shots last week. Petunias are invaluable, and there's so many new ones out there. Verbena, so many different colors there. This combines so well with the dark velvety one that you see in the background, and then you've got the brighter one that really spices it up. So this is one way you can get a contrast of color. And in the next one, you're gonna see a slight difference new petunias out there. This one is edged with green. So interesting. And complemented by similar tones in that verbena. Okay? And the next one, you know that may be a lantana. This is another verbena. White picks up some of the light tones in this petunia. 
and then the dark tones here of that petunia. And then you've got a little million bells over here. That one, again, picks up the color in the other two flowers, but has a slightly different color inside of there. So it's, it's not monochromatic, and yet it really ties that color together. And the next one, please. Beautiful, beautiful petunias. Lovely color in this one, but what is so unusual about this is the plant itself. It's variegated, and it's very heavy. It's an attractive variegation, and so this would be good as a part of a grouping in the ground or as a part of your container. Now, I think we have one more to share, okay? Look at this unusual one. I could do a walk through and pick out some very interesting combinations. Look what you could do with that one. You could go to the pinky peachy, you could go to the yellow, you could go to a direct contrast. Now there are some differences in these petunias. And a lot of these new ones I personally have not tried. Number one, it's impossible, okay? To, to do all of that. But it's fun when you try them to give us some feedback as to how they work for you because a lot of these newer ones do require some deadheading. The Serfinas and the Supertunias are sterile. They don't set seed, therefore they don't have to be deadheaded. But they don't have these vibrant colors either. And so I really would invite you to try some of these and then let us know how they work for you. That's a wonderful part of gardening. And we're going to share more ideas with you. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to Mary Fields Gardening Advisor. I really am in the virtual garden right now. Actually, what I did in the last couple of days was walk about in the garden center as the various and sundry trucks arrived, both in annuals and perennials, to select some of what I thought was the best of the best plants to introduce to you today and put together some combinations that would make a very nice garden. The plants that I chose it was a magnificent this this is is that one that I said that could replace the the lupin and uh, it's very long lasting Baptisia Baptisia isn't the color of that beautiful it comes also in a bright yellow and actually they would be pretty planted in close proximity to each other, you know. I have the yellow. I don't have this one. I think it is magnificent. Blooms heavily in the spring. Is this beautiful foliage all summer and then turns orangey in the fall. And then as we move over in this direction, I selected also an Achillea Coronation Gold. It is marvelous also. This is a plant that makes a great cut flower or dried flower. And if you deadhead it or cut some to dry, it will continue to bloom for a long period of time. Perhaps when I sit back down later, I can show you exactly where you deadhead this. But I'm going to bend this Baptisia down so that you can see the color tones together. They're incredibly beautiful. Now that would be lovely planted together and they would be nice either in the back or the middle of the border or could even be in some cases put into containers. And then I'm going to lift actually and I'm going to mess up her little arrangement here and move this scabiosa up into this area too. Look how pretty this is, and this is, can be put into the forward part of the border. Could be used in a container also. Needs to be deadheaded. Just simply take away the old blooms, and it keeps blooming. But look how pretty that is when it becomes a part of that planting. 
I also picked up, and I've got a tangle here with the foxglove. I also picked up another plant that blooms all summer long. So with these plants, in a space that would be 10 by 10 perhaps, you could have a garden. If you have a small backyard, this could be your garden because you would have a variety of bloom time. The gara, which is nice and airy, would weave through the other things. It blooms the entire summer, comes in white, peachy pink, this beautiful pink, but it would look so lovely with all of these. Now, if I can manage, I'm going to hold this geranium hardy geraniums different than the ones in the annual section this is geranium rosean it could weave through the other things or be near the front of the border we're planning your 10 by 10 space here okay and it's all nicely color coordinated also spread out for bloom time absolutely beautiful there going to have to sit down, running out of hands here, okay? Sit this plant down. All right, how do you mix ornamental grasses in and a change of texture? This is a pretty golden color. It's Molina. I'm fo really fond of some of these grasses. This one is not invasive, has foliage that's low to the ground, and then in midsummer, sends up tall, thin spikes of airy blossoms. And that would be lovely because it would pick up the color in the carnation gold and yet would have that airiness that opened up the whole thing. It's just a beautiful plant. Also, a color pickup, we talked about the iris and if you come into the garden center, you can see a lot of these iris in bloom now. A lot of the bearded iris that are in bloom, but this one is different. This one doesn't have the biggest, boldest flower, but I've always been so fond of it. It's a very simple flower, and I was hoping that it would hold for today, and it did. But it's, it's lovely in this little garden that we're planting here. But a bonus that when it finishes blooming, it has this lovely variegated foliage. And I've used this extensively in my own garden, in the garden beside the road and, and the garden that uh, I have a lot of sun. This is really neat. It, it can be used in a container because the foliage is so beautiful. Love that particular plant, okay? Now, if you chose to, within this kind of flower, oh, by the way, yes, this is foxglove, didn't talk about that, and we'll talk about that a little bit more extensively later, okay? Beautiful, beautiful foxglove, all in bloom. I've always been fascinated with them. They're so unusual, and there's so many different colors there, okay? Lovely. You can intersperse a lot of annuals with this to give an addition to that continuity of color. One of them, if I reach all the way over here to that scavola that we talked about earlier, if you plant this in the front of the border, it will spread among it. It can do a two and a half inch uh, foot spread. Look how Beautifully, that picks up that purple, and it gives you constant color. Perennials rarely give you constant all-season color, but the annuals can help add to that. And there's one other that I will mention, and that is abutilon, which comes also in different colors and it gets quite tall. I think you'd have to come fairly closely on this. See how lovely that is? Beautiful little blossom there. It is an annual, gets quite tall, comes in lots of different colors. And so this, this is just a small garden, can be repeated to make a big garden and have other additions. But we're gonna continue to talk about the color that you can enjoy and we will be back with you in just a moment. Memorial Day, 
remember, remember, remember. Yes, indeed. Yep. Yeah. Some more beautiful plants. Yes, I, I have um, a little story to tell you about the fox love, but before we go into that, I also would like to share that shrubs and trees are such an important part of our garden. Oh, absolutely. They are the structure of the garden, and, and with the shrubs, the furnishings, mm -hmm. uh, and then you have the perennials and annuals for additional interest. Mm -hmm. But one that is very much underused is the expert azalea, and I think, oh, well, that's all right. We'll talk about digitalis, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to tell you a little bit of a story about digitalis. Um, foxglove, which I showed you earlier. This was in my garden several years ago because foxglove isn't always a dependable perennial, but it is a plant that I can't resist and love to have in the garden. And so I'm satisfied to enjoy it while it's there, okay? It's like the the beauty of the iris and so forth. And if you did head the tall spike, it will, in this season, come back with side shoots also. If you let some of those spikes dry and sprinkle the seeds around, mm -hmm. then you can have a garden like the one you just <laughs> saw. And right now, in the corner where I had these plants last year, mm -hmm. it's just loaded with little babies. Ah. So I've got to move some of those little babies right. around to <laughs> other places. So foxglove is an invaluable part of the landscape, so long as you understand how to use it. Right. right. And a lot of these plants that reseed, which I have many mm -hmm. that reseed, and when you mulch is important. I like to mulch now because the ground is warmed up now. I like to mulch because that helps to hold the moisture in for the summertime. But getting that mulch down now means that those seeds that reseed, like the foxglove, will fall into there and have the chance to sprout. If you mulch heavily on top of those seeds in late summer, you might lose that. Mm -hmm. So understanding when to mulch is very important. Right. And I think we have time to share just a few of the things it's, that are in bloom touching right on now. Touching azalea. So oh, oh, mm -hmm. we've brought the, oh, mm -hmm. good, good, good. Expert azalea in bloom right now are just going out <coughs> of bloom. And, and underused. This one, actually, I took this picture at the garden center and it's totally beautiful so it's good time to get this sort of thing in and it's wonderful at the edge of a, a tree um, it enjoys some shade right. although it'll grow mm -hmm. in full sun now I also went out into the garden center and took picture of the Chinese fringe tree this is a spectacular magnificent <laughs> plant I have <coughs> never did this last year too. Mm -hmm. Never seen so many blooms on one plant. <laughs> There's two varieties primarily that we carry. One is the native, which I have in my garden and is native there. And it is as an understory and doesn't bloom as heavily as this, but it's gorgeous. Here's the close up of that Chinese one. I did also plant one of these and it's now probably 15, 20 feet tall, and is has lots of bloom on it, too. The beauty is the native one blooms early, and then this one comes into bloom, so you've got the dual kind of That's thing right. going mm -hmm. on there. <coughs> and in that same area where this Chinese fringe tree is growing at the Fair Oaks location, there is also the Kusa dogwood. Now, we have a lot of different varieties of dogwood. You get the native one that comes on first, right. usually, mm -hmm. and then you have the hybrids, and then you get into the Kusa dogwoods. And this one in the next few days is just going to be magnificent. Such a beautiful plant. As a matter of fact, I picked a branch from that. It's just so unusual. Right now, it's, it's almost a green cast to it, which it is. is almost as pretty. Mm -hmm as if it were um, 
white, mm -hmm. but it will whiten up. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing is that it will also form some very unusual berries. So when you plant all of these various plants, you really are contributing to taking care of the wild and life. Oh, yes. Absolutely mm -hmm. are. It's so we've wonderful. got about one minute left, a little okay. over a minute left. Well, I wanted to, <laughs> you know what, I'm just going to see I if I have, have to time to reach <laughs> into this. I did not have time to discuss this, but if I can turn it without a disaster here, <laughs> whites. Oh my goodness, go for Cosmos, go for the white scavola. Ooh, look at all those pretty whites oh, that yeah. go together. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't a white container be oh. beautiful? Oh, yes. And the variegated uh, abutilon? Well, as you mentioned before, Ooh. you know, whites, but creamier tones and various types of tones of the same Absolutely. color are, are just striking. I just love it. <coughs> just love it. So, anyway, gonna, gonna finish up today and go out to Fair Oaks and that's right. If you come that direction, please say hello. That's right. You'll find her out in the annual section, That's the perennial right. section, and out there. And it's yeah. so great seeing you out there, being, having so much fun. You're planting. I love and, oh. you to say hello. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Next week, David will be here, and he's going to talk about some timely gardening tips, things that need to be done now to get ready for the summer season. So lots going on. We hope you will come by Maryfield Garden Center. Again, uh, we'll be open all weekend. We open on Monday, but close a little early be closing at, at 6 o'clock instead of 8 o'clock. So have a great week. Have a safe week. Have a wonderful holiday. And we will see you next time. Take care.